Another object browser might be for objects common to an I.O. module added to the RTU. If we look at the configuration of the physical I.O. and add an I.O. module, we can select this one. And I'll give the module a name, 5304. We'll have it automatically create the objects, but I won't bother with a Modbus or a DP point uh, for those objects. Apply. And I'll write that to my controller. Now, to look at an object browser to see these new uh, channels, I can either add it to an existing object browser, or I can add it to a new one. Let's first add it to a new one. I'll call it 5304. And just like the previous example, I can select objects by a certain name. Now we have, in addition to the default I.O. on the 5575, we also have for the 5304. And this will add all the objects related to that. I could also add to an existing object browser. So this one here, since it has all the I.O., I could add the same way I did here. So now they're here as well as on this one. Another custom object browser that you might be interested in is one for objects common to a category of system data. Now we already have in our online diagnostics a lot of information related to the status of the RTU and its logic application, but we have access to even more. There is a wealth of system data and diagnostic information. Most of it you probably won't need, but let me show you what's available. If I was to type in you know, system and open up the system data list, we have in each one of these categories up from 10 to 20 other uh, objects. So for example, under capacity, we have objects related to memory capacity. An event capacity. Under the config, this is the information that fills that particular tab on the status online tab, as well as the info. We have things like the, uh, the battery voltage and the, in the supply voltage. Let's add for an example, just to try this, everything about the system clock category. Under configuration, I'll add another browser and I'll call this system clock. And then I'll edit by adding, adding an entry for a category of system data. So this is an entire group, and here are all those categories right here for you. So instead of selecting an individual reference of a particular uh, parameter under that category, I can add the whole category. So I'll select system clock, and it just shows one entry here. I'll apply, but when I look at it online, Here's my system clock browser and refresh. It fills it with all the objects of that uh, category. And this is where if I use my continuous refresh for, let's try actually one second. I can see the time increasing here. 
and we've got the other parameters for uh, the year, month, etc. Now you may be wondering why the auto refresh interval by default is five seconds instead of one second. Well, when an object is created, you decide when and what kind of protocol address is assigned to it. So Remote Connect cannot use a protocol to read or write their values in an object browser like this one. Instead, it uses a file transfer. In this way, objects remain protocol independent, which means they can have a Modbus address and or a DMP3 address or no address. Now, when there are many objects in an object browser, a one second refresh interval may not be long enough to complete a file transfer. Recall that a maximum of 15,000 objects are supported. So given the expectation that you will have lots of objects, we have chosen the default re refresh interval of five seconds as a more realistic choice. There's also a feature to add entries to any one of these object browsers uh, in an ad hoc manner. So this means while online, I could select, for example, pump one and add another entry, for example, uh, selecting analog input one. And notice how it's added in italics. So this means it is definitely viewable and refresh uh, is possible as well, but uh, it will not be saved with the project. So it's added as a temporary entry. Uh, the same goes with this default browser at the very top of the folder here. So if I select this one, this is a, a, a full-on ad hoc browser. So I can add entries here as well. And refresh these. These also are shown in italics to remind you that they're temporary. So if you would like to keep these temporary entries, add them to the configuration tab instead. So go back to the configuration, find that particular object browser and add the entry here so that it remains uh, with the project when it's saved. So in this case now it's in bold or in regular type uh, so that it will be kept when you save the project. Uh, consider for a moment this particular object here. I can write to the value because it's not assigned to I.O. It's a uh, an object that I created. Now, I wouldn't normally write to runtime, but if I did to uh, did write to it, it's expecting uh, an integer value here. So if I wrote 1, 2, 3, for example, to it, This is okay. Now, if I uh, decided I want to change the uh, a type uh, for this, the data type for this object, and I changed it here, pump one runtime, it currently has no data type associated with logic. But let's say I was changing it and I made it from, instead of integer, I changed it to real. This might be distracting when I get back to the online object browser. I'll just write this at the moment. The browser is showing a integer value by default here. If I, knowing that I've just changed this type to integer, try to write a real value, you'll have this red box around and it might not be immediately obvious why I cannot write a, a real value. After all, I've selected the data type to be real. And the reason is in this message here, it says invalid input an integer value is expected. And well, the reason is the displayed format is what needs to be changed to real and then this is acceptable. So um, don't be confused by that, um, that error message. It's referring to the displayed format. Now I can write the value without a problem. 
So summarizing, we created various object browsers. There was a default one to begin with, which had all the uh, objects on the local RTU. And then there was uh, one associated with a IO module that we added. And then we chose object browsers associated with a part of your application. And then finally, a system data category for an object browser. In the next video, we'll look at what uh, forced objects are all about.